Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 35th episode of Tales of Tamriel. We are glad uh, you are back to join us for another amazing episode. We've got game news, including patch notes, a new community contest, some congratulations that need to be given out, and a new Lore Masters archive. We also go over your iTunes reviews and emails, so stay tuned. Also, special shout out to Chris Rayner 37 or up from Twitter. Here is your critical surge for your morning commute. Have a good day and hope you uh, have a good time listening to us. Anyway, I'll explain that later. Okay. I am your host, Agelos, the elf slaying host, which is awesome. And with me, as always, the pink sneak thief. And she who has a mini panic attack, if anyone tries to open a chest before her, Thais, how are you doing this afternoon? Um, I'm good. I'm good. How? Yeah, it's a good day. So, uh, how many little mini heart attacks did you have last night when we were opening all the chests and you couldn't get them? Three. Three? I had three, yes. Yes. Well, that's remarkable because most of the time women don't survive heart attacks. That is true. Yeah. That is, yeah. Wow. wow. Way to be Mormon. I know. Starting to show off right. Also joining us, the man who is running our stream and PvP meathead of Dragon Knight, Opinus. No, that's not a dirty word. <laughs> Delty of Delty is Gaming, how are you doing today? Oh my god, great. How are you guys? Doing great. <laughs> Glad you could join us again. Yeah, thanks uh, for yeah. having me. Oh, it's always a pleasure. All right, well, enough with the awkward introductions. Let's go ahead and get right into the game news. Okay. First up with game news this week, patch 1.4.4 released, and uh, as well as some stealth hotfixes. So let's go into that a little bit, as soon as I pull up the right one. The Elder Scrolls version 1.4.4 is an incremental patch that addressed several issues, mainly with gameplay, itemization, UI, and the Alliance War. We have fixed a number of issues that were impacting Nightblades, uh, other than Nightblades being Nightblades, and stealth. Um, with other issues scheduled to be hotfixed later this week, and we'll talk about that in a second. They also made some tweaks for restoring stamina and magicka while in combat. Woot. I know, right? Let, let's go ahead and let's talk about that real quick. Um, so, yeah, heavy attacks from one-handed weapons, two-handed weapons, bow and dual wield, um, when they're fully charged, actually restore stamina based on your level. As well, fully charged heavy attacks from Destruction Staff and Restoration Staffs now also restore Magicka based on your level. Big, um, big change, though. Yeah, yeah. Have, have, well, you, uh, have you seen the other change with the Restoration Staff? No, no. Why don't that's you enlighten the, us a little bit? That's the biggest change. Okay, the reason why Restoration Staff had so much damage is because the Cycle of Life passive gave you 10% damage... Um, if you had full life, based on your amount of health you had. They took yeah. that away from the Restoration Staff ability now. Ooh. So Nightblades are definitely 10% less. It's a good, it's a very, very good change for the balance of the game. You know, all right, Thais, it looks like you have something you want to say. Go ahead. And... I, the only thing I have to say is I, I'm sad. You know, it, it, it's a little strange when the healing weapon is the single target <laughs> best damage yeah. weapon in the game. It's a little Cheesy. off. Yeah, it's a little weird. I know you're upset, but it's true. I've seen people pull insane damage and they're and they're using a healing weapon. Yeah. That that is true because when we were in Cyrodiil mm -hmm. last night, I was the main healer using the healing spells, mm -hmm. but someone else in our party was using a healing staff to attack. Yeah. So. Well, it, it is. Those heavy attacks do so much damage, and if you're not taking any hits, you've got that extra bonus. Yeah, you're you're pretty powerful. So that so. was the real big change. That, um, and then when they patched it, it didn't actually work, and it didn't actually take the damage away. Um, so it it works now. And then they added the destruction staffs, give uh, heavy attacks. You have to do a full heavy. Um, but they also give you Magicka back, which was a good change, too, because then they kind of gave it more incentive for the Destruction Staff. I think it just honestly is a good change to balance out more of the DPS instead of just being so powerful towards a Nightblade, because Nightblade just by far is the best. Now it's a little bit more even. Nice. Now, I have a question for you. I don't know if you'll have the real answer to this one, or Thais, if you'll have the real answer, and I don't even have the real answer. I just need to do some testing with it. I'll make one when up. <laughs> when they're doing the fully or the fully charged heavy attacks, here's the question: Like, 
when you're holding down the heavy attack button, you can hold it in and he finishes the entire attack while you're holding in the button. Now it takes about mm, two seconds, I think it is. It might not be two seconds. Eh, maybe. I can't remember the exact timing. For it to go fully do the heavy attack. Now you can cut that, hold the button down a little shorter, and it still registers as a heavy attack damage according to... Uh, but you don't get the stuff. You, yeah, that's what I yeah. was kind of curious if you noticed that or not. I was yes, testing I, it. Yeah. So I guess that kind of is... It's going to be kind of weird with... Um, Weaving. Oh, spray the cat. Yeah, weaving. Um, weaving attacks back and forth with heavy attacks. If you don't do that, you don't get your stamina or magicka back. Yeah, you really got to let it go off on a heavy. What I used to do is hold down a heavy, and then i hit the block button, and that would actually make it go faster. But I tried to do that again to see if it worked, and it didn't. Mm, nice. Well, I, you know I'm not fond of weaving. Like, I mean, not that it's, it's just a cheesy way to get your damage up. So I, I, I hate the fact that they allow that in even at the start. I agree. So it's kind of interesting. Um, I, I think this will definitely maybe take away from a little bit of the weaving. I don't know. Maybe not with the uh, Magicka casters, but with stamina, definitely. And I did notice that when you, the full heavy attack, um, you can get two light attacks off in the time it takes to do one heavy. So And the damage is pretty equal, so it's whether or not you want that stamina return. Yep. That's what I've noticed, at least from my testing. I didn't see much of a difference between two heavies or two lights and one heavy. It was about the same damage um, within a few points. All right, so that was pretty cool. What do you, Thais, what do you think about the stamina and magicka um, return from heavy attacks? I use it a lot on my restoration staff, but on my destruction staff, I very rarely ever use heavy attacks. Really? Yeah. I use my... My light attacks or my skills? Hmm, I see. Well, maybe you'll want to pick that up now that you get Magicka back. It'd be a nice way to restore Magicka. But you're wearing mostly light armor. You probably don't have a lot of problems with regeneration. I'm wearing all light armor now. Oh, are you? Oh. Mm -hmm. You made me my light armor. Oh, I made you heavy armor, too. No, you didn't. I'm pretty sure. I might be wrong. Okay, um, let's move off of that. You're right. My pants are heavy. Oh, okay. I'm like, I could have swore I did, but I don't know. I made a lot of armor and weapons. Um, next up, actually, part of this hot fix is they had uh, stealth fixes, which are kind of interesting. They fixed an issue where the racial passive stealthy was not reducing the detection radius, and they fixed an issue where the three-set bonus for Nightblade item set was not decreasing the range at which you could be detected. So both of those have been fixed. I heard there was a lot of complaints about that when the patch first hit. Uh, Delty, did you hear any of those complaints? About what again? Sorry, go ahead. Uh, stealthy passive oh, and the yeah, Nightblade yeah. item set not actually working. Yeah, I, I, it's tricky. I don't know why they're having problems with that Nightblade stuff. Nah, I guess they just really don't like night blades. They're just, eh, who cares? Apparently not. <laughs> they keep getting crapped on. Well, well I mean, when, I, yeah, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I think if I did that much damage, I wouldn't mind a little bit of crap falling down my way once in a while. I'd be like, I don't care. I, I just, might not be able to stealth, but I still do double damage of everyone else. People bang the on the night blade. The oh, no, you don't. No. Oh, oh heavens, no. No, no. Uh -huh. Compared to a night blade, I'm like flinging, you know, I'm... You know, like a wet pillow kind of thing going on. Yeah. Well, at, at Endgame, when you, it's basically, you know, you have what the biggest bosses are one target. They're not, so a night, um, a Dragonite or whatever, I pulled 4,500 DPS in a Craglorn the other day, but that was with 5,000 mobs around. Now, when I'm on a single target, I'm pulling, I pulled 1,100 in trials once. Um, that's with all the buffs, that's with all the, you know, every little thing being buffed up and debuffed. But other than that, man. The Nightblade, you're hitting two buttons over and over. That's it. Two buttons. Crippling grass, funnel health, funnel health, funnel health, funnel health, funnel health. I mean, that it's it's cheesy, dude. <laughs> anyway, sorry, ran over. <laughs> no, it's fine. All right. Um, does anyone have anything else they want to say about patch 1.4.4? There wasn't a whole lot in this one. It was mostly bug fixes, a few bug crashes, uh, stealth fixes. But the big thing was the stamina return and the magicka return. And, of course, the nerf to restoration staffs. Sad. Except for the stamina return. That's, that's, well, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, I, I think it'll help 
And I don't disagree with you. I think it'll help, but I still don't think it fixes the issue completely. And we're not going to get into that rant again because it's the same rant Delty and I've had pretty much every week since we started the show. It's, it, getting, it's getting balanced out, though. It really, it's I mean, getting there, but I don't think it solves the main problem. I, I don't think I either, but PvE, PvP, you can actually play however you want. That's what I really like about PvP. You can PvP, PvE, uh, solo, yeah. Maybe you could get away with some veteran dungeons. It depends how good your other friends are, but yeah. Not, not the high end. Like, nope. The Crypt of Hearts and Trials and Dragonstar, no. Nope, no, you're right. Um, but lower veteran dungeons and stuff like that, yeah, you could you could do that all the way up until the top tier related stuff. Then then you're gonna have issues. All right, next up on game news: Tales of the Dead version two. <laughs> <laughs> version two. <laughs> version two. The second Tales of the Dead contest is here, and they've returned with another. Was that Cobb? Yeah, screenshot from Tamriel. You impressed, aren't you? I am, actually. Yeah. How did it come to this? What led to such an unfortunate and untimely death of this traveler? And who was he or she? If you can come up with the best fictional story, you'll be the winner. To participate, take a good look at the image below, which looks like a Breton with a spear through his head. Kind of, You know what? This kind of looks like the ending of 300. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that's oh actually that's no, not even the ending of 300 it's like the very beginning where he's like lay down your weapons and he throws the spear at him yeah that's it oh that's a perfect story no one can steal that anyway if you want to participate <laughs> take a good look at the image below then create your own fictional entry of 500 words or less that tells us more about the scene you can write a short story journal entry or any kind of fictional text once you're happy with it uh, with your creation, you can go ahead and post it on the entry thread. Now, this only goes um, from September 22nd until Friday, September 26th. Oh, my goodness, it's already over. I didn't realize it was that short. Wow. Anyway, sorry about that, guys. This is over already, so I hope you did it. If you're one of the winners, you'll receive a $25 electronic gift card to the Bethesda store and an ESO t-shirt of your choosing. I know, okay. it's when, already over. When was the last show? What date? Uh, last show was the 20th. Oh, all right. Yeah, they I literally see, only okay. did it a week. You oh. have one week to do it. Well, we could probably just cut that chunk out of the show, though. No, nah, I'll keep it, <laughs> but that, that's a shame. Live um, is live, oh. baby. <laughs> that's live show for you right there. Um, when I read this, I'm sitting there looking at the date, and that's how bad I am with dates. I looked at it, I'm like, oh, I could be able to announce this on the show. It'd be fine. And then I just realized as I looked down at my clock, going, oh, that was over two days ago. Ah, darn it. Yeah. Way to be observant. I'm as bad at reading maps as I am at reading calendars, apparently. Them so, words. Them words. Hey, but you can do math. I can do math. Yeah, but I can read maps <laughs> and, and look at calendars. I see. But I can't do math. Be careful. Your Daedric Prince nemesis is coming. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I... I, I like these kind of things. Like, they're giving away little gift cards and T-shirts and stuff like that. Just, I like these little community events. Like, I'm not very creative when it comes to that kind of thing. But uh, I know we have very, very talented um, role players and stuff like that, which is actually surprisingly large in our community. I wouldn't say surprisingly. I mean, that's that's Elder Scrolls, right? I mean, that's kind of what it's for. I think it's... But, yeah, you're right. It, there's a lot of people that take it seriously and... Dedicate a lot of time to it. It's impressive. I think if you tried and I edited for you, you could come up with something really good. You're only saying that because I make up silly songs at random. You do. And they're uh, usually pretty good. Eh. Except for the bad grammar and spelling and sentence structure. <laughs> that <makes it> funny. <laughs> Man, do you yeah, like anything so... that he does? No, not really. God. Thank God, he's cute. Oh, my God. Yeah. These two. I know. Wow. Wow. You know what? I'll tell you what. That guy right there is me after our, uh, you know, about another year of our marriage. <laughs> That's me. That's the sphere. Yes. Which works. We have a lot of acres of land. I could just bury them anywhere in my yard. And I do have a boar spear. Yeah, see? It's perfect. I got to keep that away from you from now on. All right. Um, so still, very cool. Let's go ahead and move on to the next section. World first kill of Dragon Star Arena veteran mode. And that goes to, oh dear, 
Not me. Alacrity. Alacrity, thank you. Oh my goodness, that was not me. Alacrity World First Dragon Star Arena Veteran Kill. That was done on September 20th at 4.28 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So, congratulations, guys. Um, the final time, excluding death penalty, was 2 hours and 47 minutes to complete the entire thing. That's impressive. That's impressive. So, yeah. Yeah. Hey, All I right. finished Crypto Hearts. What up? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's Put something up, that baby. I do like about this game is some of the like the trials, which are supposed to be the raid content, which should last that long, take like nine minutes. But like the veteran dungeons take like eight hours to do. Dragon Star Arena takes a long time, even non-vet. I mean, it's I mean, oh, it, well, it took them two hours and forty-seven minutes. This was their killing attempt. They probably were farming this for hours. I would love to find out how many total hours they put in from the like the time they first stepped into it till the time they downed it. Why did they exclude uh, death penalty time? Uh, because death penalty time, anytime you die, adds minutes to your timer. So their total time was like nine hours for in terms of like when you look at the scoreboard. Like anytime you die. It, oh, it's kind of okay. like the chocobo racing in uh, Final Fantasy X where... When you hit the balloons, you get time added? Yeah, or you get time reduced, or if you hit stuff, they add time. I hate that race. That's how this works. Anytime you die, it adds time. Okay. okay. So, yeah. But it's still really cool. So congratulations, guys. And uh, we're going to move on from there because we're going to talk about that in a little bit later. Um, next up on Game News, ESO Live, the second um, live stream from ZeniMax was took place on Friday the 26th. Sadly, I did not get to watch it. Um, so, Delty, I know you said you got to watch it a little bit. you want to give us a little, just a little synopsis of what happened? And I kind of want to talk about it a little bit uh, maybe next week after yeah, I watch it. it just kind of was talking about the community stuff going on and whatnot. I mean, it wasn't... They kind of talked about 1.5 a little bit, then previewed Dragon Star Arena with, I think, Defunct did it. And um, it was good, but I was doing Dragon Star Arena myself, so I kind of... Yeah, you know, listen to it in the background and stuff. Uh, it wasn't too informative of information, so it was all right. But you know, just and they had people on actually from the community that were like RPers and stuff. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so they do a lot for the community, and you know, basically the people that are making the fan art and doing the music, they highlighted some of that. So it's cool to give people shout outs that you know, not just guides like mine or whatever, but people that are just really vested in the game. Oh, absolutely. Like, uh, there are a lot of talented artists and stuff like that that put their, you know, their uh, creative minds at this game and just love this world so much that they really dig into it. Um, just like the uh, giveaway on uh, Tamro Foundry of uh, Peregrine Studios jewelry and stuff like that. It's gorgeous stuff, and it's I love it. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll talk about that maybe a little bit next week if uh, I can dig through it and there's actually anything of note. Um, but I was away and I got the little notification they went live and I'm like, oh, no signal to watch it. Darn. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to the next bit of news, which is our last bit of news for this week, actually. It's another Lore Master Archive response to citizen inquiries. In today's issue... ZeniMax presents a response endorsed by, oh my goodness. A cantor of Shimmermeen sat the arc of indoctrination to the requests of an enthusiastic Kajiti citizen, as well as his responses to your questions about the Thalmor in the Second Era. Oh, Thalmor. All right, we're going to skip this. We're going to move on to the next section already. No, I'm just kidding. Yes, no elves. No elves. All right, let's you guys, go ahead. Hold on, you guys are in Daggerfall right now, aren't you? We are yeah. in Daggerfall. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, it's you, not bad. You know, I actually am really enjoying it because it's kind of like Game of Thrones and Tamriel because everyone hates everyone else. And that is true. Everyone is killing everybody else in their own, yeah. their own realm. Yeah, like while, you know, we're all concerned like in Ebonheart Pact of protecting our lands and repelling invasion. But from the elves. From the elves. Well, it's everybody. I mean, we're just Mostly what we do. Um, I, I haven't played all the way through the... Um, Almar Dominion, but I know they kind of repel a little bit of invasion from the Maomir, the Sea Elves, as well as launching um, invasions and stuff like that. But, like, Daggerfall Covenant is just like, well, you know, let's just kill each other. Like, <laughs> our two sides can just sit back and just sounds, be like, well... Sounds like America. 
<laughs> oh, oh, I know. That's, I'm you just a, became a political podcast. I know. I'm an American crazy man, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't. We don't need to. We don't need to fight them. Just let them fight between each other. They'll kill themselves off. It's yeah. all good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, let's continue on with response to citizen inquiries. Oh, I do not want to read this one. Okay. Esteemed citizen of the Aldmari Dominion. You suck. Thank you for expressing your interest in the critical functions performed by the Presidium of Aldmari Cultural Illumination and Dissemination to further solidify the intercultural bonds of our magnificent alliance. We strive to give our ear to any citizen with suggestions, questions, or concerns relating to our tireless efforts to provide the Dominion with education to promote cooperation and understanding between Altmer, Bosmer, and Khajiit. Your two requests and one inquiry have been received and processed, and it is our sincere hope that you find the determinations reached by the Presidium satisfactory. Please note that any additional queries related to your submission, which has been assigned the Citizen Inquiry Identifier 3278BP, must be accompanied by a completed additional inquiry form approved by your district's Dalmore Representative of Civil Concerns. All right, I'm going to interrupt you just real quick. This is why Aldmari Dominion sucks. They remind me of the DMV. Continue on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Request one. Regarding the inclusion of a broader survey of Kajiti heroes in the new edition of Combined History of the Aldmari Dominion, vol- Volume 4, Historical Persons of Note, your opinion is valued and important. Though we must limit the number of highlighted historical figures described in this already significant tome by necessity, your feedback will be taken into consideration. We have noted your observation about the preponderance of Altmeri individuals in the book, and will take it under advisement in the event that a new edition is issued. Essentially, he's telling the poor little Khajiit, screw you. Continue. Okay. <laughs> Request two. Regarding celebration of the Khajiiti Festival of Sugar Singing, our greatest ambition is to be sensitive to the needs and desires of all citizens. It is therefore with the utmost regret... We must inform you that the sugar singing will continue to be prohibited in most major cities due to the disruption of business and domestic peace that has been reported in municipalities where the festival has been provisionally allowed. As with any Thalmor ruling, you may continue to raise specific concerns by visiting your local representative, accompanied, of course, by the proper forms, which may vary depending on the nature of the additional request or complaint. Anything to say? I'm I'm just... Like, I don't know how anyone plays Aldmari at this point. I, I, I just want to punch oh. him in the throat. So do I. Okay. Inquiry 1. Regarding becoming more involved in your local governing body, the Thalmor is always pleased to accommodate and encourage citizens who wish to become more active in promoting cooperation and understanding throughout the Dominion. All Thalmor positions and offices are confirmed by the illustrious Queen Arin's own hand, ensuring only individuals with true dedication to the goals of a productive, prosperous, and victorious Dominion reach any office. By undertaking every possible effort to be an outstanding citizen, even you may one day be recognized by Her Majesty. The Presidium of Aldmari Cultural Illumination and Dissemination thanks you, thanks you again for your interest. If you find any of our carefully considered responses to be inadequate, do not hesitate to submit an approved additional inquiry form. Glory to the Dominion. These responses endorsed by Icandor of Shemarine Sapiar of Indoctrination. President and CEO of Comcast. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, that was a mouthful, but that was really uh, fun to read. There uh, was a lot of big words really close <laughs> together. Yeah, they're out in Dominion or a bunch of D-holes. It was, it was fun. D-holes. Anyway. I thought you were going to go D-bag, but I like D-holes. <laughs> D-holes. All right, we got a little bit of question and answer a little bit, and this is actually kind of interesting. Um, I'm often confused. Fused regarding the distinction between the Fist of Thalmor, or Justicars, and the diplomats and nobility known as the Thalmor. Would you perhaps explain the difference between the two groups and the duties they fulfill in the Dominion? And that's from the Axran. 
A cantor of Shimmerin says, The Thalmor, which was originally a bureau responsible for safeguarding Altmari heritage, was expanded by Queen Aren and now functions as the executive arm of the Altmari Dominion. It incorporates representatives from all three of the Dominion's member races, and ratios appropriate to their administrative abilities. The Fists of Thalmor is an effectuation unit of officers, deployed when stern measures must be taken to enforce adherence to Thalmor dicta. The Justicars are more... Conventional law enforcement officers, often local in origin and jurisdiction. A.K.A. the SS. I know, I'm really going here. Who are the members of Thalmor Inner Council, and why are they chosen to be part of it? The members of the Inner Council is personally chosen by and serves at the pleasure of Queen A. Wren. They are said to be all individuals whom Her Majesty trusts implicitly. The exact membership is confidential, but it is no secret that the Inner Council includes King Aradan Cameron of Valenwood and Lord Garesh Ree, the Speaker for the Main. As an Imperial, I'm fully aware of the bitter differences that divide the Altmer and my people. However... I wish that one day we set aside our hatred and prejudice for each other. Will it take what will it take for our two races to coexist in peace and friendship? Do you even think that's possible? That's uh, Alexandria of Cyrodiil. Your question, Imperial, is either naive or disingenuous. The Empire of Cyrodiil was founded on the blood of elves and battened on elven genocide. For thousands of years, Central Tamriel has whelped human empires, each bloodier than the last spreading grief and savagery to every corner of the continent. We Altmer have long stood by, patiently waiting for men to exhaust their penchant for warfare and embrace civilized behavior. But we can no longer abet the cycle of bloodshed by abstination. Now, the Altmar Dominion marches to Cyrodiil. There will be peace, yes, once the cancer of human imperialism is extrapolated utterly. This is a nice dry wine, by the way. Is it local? I really hate the elves, like, so much. Why, dude? We're cool. <laughs> no, they're horrible. Uh, darn. We're just better than everyone ideas. else. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. I would like to know the Thalmor's official stance on the lesser races, specifically the other races of elves. Would, would they be allowed to join us, much like the Bosmer and Khajiit? Many thanks. I must assume your question is a delicate reference to the Dunmer, as the Maramir are mere pirates who are beneath all consideration. Our unfortunate cousins of Marwin are double apostates, of course, having rejected both the Daedra and the Aedra, and have been doubly punished by divine curse for their sins of hubris and heresy. However, they do have certain, shall we say, talents that have been honed by hardship, skills that will enable them to find appropriate employment in the Tamriel wide dominion to come. If they trust to our wisdom and guidance, they will survive, and even thrive, as citizens of the dominion, once they learn that status, of course. And he's referring to their brothels. Really? I don't know, but that's oh, okay. what I'm guessing. <laughs> Because that's why I like the Dark Elves. Oh my gosh, you and brothels! I know, I'm, I'm addicted to brothels. <laughs> God. I know, that's why I will never be like The Witcher 2. I just, I will never. I was on a roll with that whole thing. I know there was a bunch of words I got wrong. <laughs> so please don't anybody look too closely into that. I, I don't think half the people even read those. That's why we like to we like to do those. Oh, cool! So I can I just can't I can just add you, my own sentences. You can make up everything. I, I, what was that, Delta? I said I can't read, so I, I just trust your. I can't wisdom. read. PVP meatheads can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Must get AP. That's my AP sound. Nice. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, that ends our game news for this week. We're gonna move on to our discussion topic and something that kind of peeves me out a little bit. This is a little bit of a host rant, and it is the race to world first. Now, for those of you who haven't been listening to the podcast, you guys will know that I am a huge PvE rating junkie. Like, that's what I meathead. used to do. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a PvE meathead. I really am. Um, and that's what I love to do. I love the competition of competitive PvE and game. And I had a lot of high hopes for Zenimax, especially with their leaderboards and stuff when they were first conceptualized. However, uh oh, however, 
there's some serious problems here that I will talk about in a little bit. But uh, first off, as we said earlier, we want to give uh, congratulations to the World First Guild of Dragon for the Dragon Star Arena veteran mode who downed it. Um, with that being said, there was a lot of uh, trolling and arguing and whatnot on the forum post of the official kill. Uh, going back and forth, going, you guys didn't down it first, we downed it first on the PTS, blah, 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 blah. First off, PTS doesn't count, just so well, you know. Duh. It, no, but it, that's neither here nor there. But about mm, three pages into this back and forth, Zenimax decides they're going to reply with a, we, don't, we do not uh, confirm any world first unless we're doing a, a competition. So they would not actually say whether or not who had the world first. That's a problem for me. Really? That's a problem for a lot of gamers. Yeah, that, that literally pissed me off. Like, like, so uh, other games do do that? Yes, and they have an uh, API that allows people to actually create websites, stuff that actually track your progress. So API uh, is the system outside of the game. I thought that wasn't anything to do with the developers. Uh, no, 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 no. The API is still it, it, it's the code that allows us to access. The oh, game. really? So, so yes. that has to be created from a development standpoint. Before yes. I, okay, I didn't know. There, that. Well, there's several kinds. The, the API that we have in game for add-ons. There's also a web API that allows you to read statistics of your characters, and that other games do have. I know Swar Swotor has it. Right. Uh, World of Warcraft, of course, has it. Um, Wildstar has it. All that stuff, and they even so. They do, you know, when someone first downs something, they often congratulate and confirm. You huh. know, Final Fantasy, of course, has this. Anyone that has a type of endgame that's like a PvE raid, normally the, like, I remember when, um, I guess it was Blue Garter, Order of the Blue Garter on Final Fantasy finally downed uh, turn five of Binding Coil Bahama. It took them, like, five months to do it. Like, it was that hard. Wow. And the developers actually, you know, wrote up a big post. And the the Yoshi Yoshi P, who is what is he, the game director? He's essentially the guy who runs the. Who, he's everything about Final Fantasy XIV. Actually, wrote a post congratulating the team, going, "We confirm that Order of the Blue Garter has indeed downed, um, you know, Fifth Coil Obama for you know World First. It, that's something that I think competitive games... If they're going to put leaderboards in here, why would they not hmm. yeah. let us know who the World First is? People race for that. There's actually a documentary called The Race for World First. That's why I put it on here. I do encourage people to watch it. It's actually quite fascinating. Is it pretty um, good? I enjoyed it a lot. Does it and highlight the you... PvE meatheads? Like like how they freak out about... Yes! Like, Get out of the red, do. you idiots! Yes, they do. Oh, I gotta watch that. And, I mean, it, for those who are PvPers as well, I mean, you can see a lot of that mentality for competitive PvE. It's it's a fantastic documentary. Huh. I, do, I do recommend it. Um, but that being said, I'm very upset with Zenimax for not actually confirming or denying. They used to shake her head over here. Why don't you, uh, why don't you jump in and say what you want to say? I'm completely okay with them not getting in the middle of it. Whatever the gamers want to use their game for, whether they want it to be competitive or something or other, let the gamers fight it out. I don't think the game developers should have to get in the middle of it. Okay. Um, before we talk about Delta, why don't you give us your thoughts on that? Well, I'm kind of with Thais. Like, how do they even track it? I mean, if what shouldn't there be some numerical value that says, you know, this is the first person that did it? I mean, wouldn't it be that simple? I mean, why wouldn't you just say, yeah, Billy Bob got it done first? I uh, See, that's why I'm kind of confused as to why they didn't want to do it. Now, I'm going to say this right off the bat for both of you guys. You can't let gamers do that. I'm, I'm just going to say it. You can't let them fight it off between themselves because then it turns into League of Legends. Okay? Every game already turns into <laughs> League of Legends. <laughs> but <laughs> there, people do take this seriously. Like, once you get men in any game, that's it. Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. Oh. Pump the sexism. brakes. See, now there's sexism over here. Pump you the brakes. This? Okay. Now, as far as World First, yes, we want... Um, I mean, you take a screenshot of it. Have you done this yet? I mean, isn't it that... 
they do take a screenshot. Yes, well, they do. What's the pr- what proof do you need? I mean, like, didn't you wouldn't you have the achievement? You take a screenshot of the achievement. Who got the mm-hmm. screenshot first? That's right. That's I mean, what they did. They okay, posted well, a screenshot, and it, that's why I'm congratulating them. I believe they got it. What's the what's the hang up here? I mean, the the hang up is another guild saying they got it first. Regardless, well, they didn't post the screenshot, but they said they got it first. They've had it for a while, blah, blah, blah. So if from you the said, PTS. Yeah, I, I not guess, only from the PTS. They said they got it on live as well. Yeah, well, I got it on live yesterday. Where's my proof? I don't have it. Shut up. Yeah. Right? I mean, the, There is it. the proof there, but well, then the one has the screen, one doesn't. doesn't matter. <laughs> they don't matter. If they don't have any proof that they got it, then yeah, they just need to be you're quiet. You're just talking air. Can... You're just exactly. talking nonsense. Yeah. My my issue with this, without an official confirmation, is I can make a screenshot that looks valid. It's called Photoshop. But there's people who can pick that apart. <laughs> there are, but I mean, other than you know, that's that's how much effort would it really have taken for Zenimax to go? Yeah, that's bizarre. Hey, why wouldn't they? I just don't. That, why wouldn't? I know they, they can do, do it. I, I can understand why they didn't. I really can. I can see why they would want the gamers to discuss it amongst themselves. Why they wouldn't want to put their put their foot down and get in the middle of it. I can understand that. But instead of putting their foot down and taking three seconds to go, hey, this person finished it, um, and Estelden has it right. The big controversy comes from the EU and the oh. US difference. There's a time there's a time difference. EU says they had it first. Uh, U.S. Guild says they had it before that. Um, oh, so they're wanting them to decide like a referee who got it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's one of the problems. Yeah, it's not just the EU hmm. side, but that's part of the issues. Well, then that that doesn't count. Then the EU server has their their world first, and... Well, it says world, that's, though. That's yeah. world it has first. world in the title. It's data center first. <laughs> But not world first. It's okay, so two completely different servers and groups of people. But it doesn't matter. But isn't the controversy once the patch starts? Because I see what Estelden is saying. Because it's not the same day. It's not at the exact same time. Oh yeah, no, it's not. There is well, a time difference. Well, like we world, get ours world what, first eight in the morning is, or something like that. Theirs goes down several hours later. Yeah, but a world first is whoever gets it first. I mean, yeah, if, exactly. if, if it's a day later, and that's what the EU gets. I'm sorry. If it's if it's basically who got it the very first, it says world first. Who gets it first? I mean, it. it but the if EU got it the first, when the time the difference, then yeah, huh? they've done it faster. They did it faster, but world first means who did it first, regardless of who had access to it. Right. Right, and I think that's part of the the issue. Is normally the the upset the accepted term is you subtract the hours it takes for. Um, the patch to go live. So say you gets it 12 hours later, whenever they would um, finish it, they would subtract 12 hours to see if it beats the U.S. time. But it's still, you know... That could work. It could, but there's still a fight back and forth between the two groups. And to be honest, I see this eliminating the hardcore player base who this is what they go for. I mean, like I said, watch the, the race to world first and you'll see how competitive people get about this this is something that they aim for and if you can't get the the glory of a world first which is the which honestly is the developers going hey they did it first you know proof that you are the number one you're gonna push those people away guilds like uh um hey help me pronounce here Alacrity. Alacrity, thank you i know hodor i think that's the eu guild who's fighting back and forth with them they're gonna leave because they they like that competitive aspect of the game. They, they have leaderboards in the game. Apparently, Zenimax doesn't mind it, or else they wouldn't have leaderboards in the damn place. There, it, the controversy is good. I mean, we're talking about it. That's what pe- they probably wanted, anyways. Yeah, controversy is good. Unfortunately, if I had a way to be a competitive PVE, I might share the sentiment. But I'm. I, I also. I don't. Now, I'm not trying to be sexist, but I'm, but I'm not a guy. I don't feel the same way that guys do about competitiveness, in a yeah, sense. But, so but I don't women know do, too. There's women, the there's women athletes. There's women gamers. I mean, it's yeah. it has nothing to do with that, I don't think. No, 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 no but for, no, no, just for me. For oh. me. For, oh, whoops. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
What was it saying? Oh, yeah. For me personally, I know that I don't understand because I'm not. Mm. Well, that's not a woman or that's not a woman the, or a guy thing. That's, no, that's just because I was gonna say the, the the Finnish team that was took part in that uh, race for world first documentary was six women, eight two men, uh, with like two guy backups. There were a lot of females on that team. I will show you after this thing. Well, if you're, if you're competitive, you. you're competitive. If you're doing a mm-hmm. ping, if you're doing a ping pong match, you want to win. You just even have you have it or you don't, and it's okay to have it or not. It doesn't really matter. But the problem with the competitive scene and what I ran into is it takes all the fun out of the game. The only fun is when you're on top. You so you're struggling 99% of the time. Once you finally reach on top, whew, it's fun. That's it. One percent of the time is fun. You, mm-hmm. Your whole character, everything you play, it's not in your possession anymore. All it is is just whatever's clever, whatever is the new hot thing, you can't play the way you want to play. And you have someone telling you what to do all the time, which is kind of like what I do to some people. But <laughs> <laughs> um, So it takes that, a lot of that out of it. Um, so it's a huge sacrifice. It takes the fun out. It's, that's the truth. But to some people, that is their fun. And I, right. I'm not going to say this. I'm not competitive... Well, I am competitive in that, but I'm not up to the point where I have a job. I can't do the race to world first. But just kind of like the guys who can't play football, they set up a fantasy football league because they like, you know, they like watching. I enjoyed in my Warcraft days watching when a new patch went out. I was like checking like Wowhead and and uh, MMO champion every like 10 minutes to see who got world first. Really? I was watching the streams. I thought that was fantastic even though I knew personally I think at my best, I was part of uh, Semantics, which was like a US-25 guild, and that was, we were like number one or two on our server, but we were, you know, like, pretty far away from world first, and I had fun with that. I really did, but a lot of the fun for me was watching the competition between the main guilds, and that got a lot of people interested in the game that weren't really into the game because it was Warcraft. They were into it because of the competitive scene that got sponsors like steel series to you know fun teams to get people interested in that type of play that is why the rating scene in warcraft is still going it's not as powerful as it once was but it's still going and no other mmo to date has been able to pick it up because they haven't been able to provide that same competitive atmosphere and I think Zenimax, by outright saying we're not saying who has World First, is hurting their hardcore player base. Those guys who like to do that. Those guilds, you know, Hodor and all those who want to race to World First. You're taking that away from them. And as such, you're going to push away some of your hardcore players. Yeah, That's good point. my thoughts. Thais, do you have anything you want to say on that? Am I crazy? Uh- I, I don't I don't know. No idea. No idea? Okay. Uh, Deltia, how about you? Any any closing thoughts on that? Well, I think you're right about that with the hardcore. I think this game really is further from the bat. But um, to your point, you want to keep your player base. And, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know how they would metrics that because the time zone different thing is going to be crazy. But I don't know. It's weird to kind of measure that. I, it's just... You have leaderboards for a point, you know? So Yeah. But, you know, it, I just... From them not saying it, it, it seems yeah, like a weird it. back step. They're like, oh, we're going to support leaderboards, but we're not going to tell you who actually had it first. You know? And they're, they're so good with their community. It's just maybe they don't want to make people mad or something. I don't know, because they are so good with the community and, and acknowledging people. It just seems like a, I don't know, a weird thing on their part. Maybe it's just a one-off mistake. Hmm, maybe. I don't know. I just I think that's really gonna hurt their their rating scene. Like, you know, those guys who like to do that kind of stuff yeah. may start looking elsewhere. Yep. I mean, let's face it, I love I love Elder Scrolls. Not not saying I I'll continue playing this game just because I like Elder Scrolls, period. And I like the somewhat casual aspects like I y- I like games that don't force you to be hardcore to have fun, but I like the option to be hardcore if I want to. And if they're not going to help support the hardcore community, I mean, Warlords of Draenor is two months away. You know? What's that? Yeah. 
Um, no, I, I honestly don't know what that means. It's oh, the new okay. WoW expansion. It's it's two months away. And it's going to. I I really hope WoW dies. It won't. Um, I can still dream though. You can still don't dream. Don't push my dreams. Yeah. If people anyway. want to play the game and that's their thing, go. Yeah, do no, it, it's that's awesome. People play Minecraft and they have little freaking crazy little people that build blocks and they play <laughs> it for. Always against me. Well, they play it for 25 hours a day. I have no idea. Yeah, 25 hours a day, that's what I said. Yeah. I have no idea why that would be fun or whatever. People probably look at this game and go, what is this doing, dude, doing playing this for, you know, all the time? Do what you want to do. I don't care if you play WoW. I think it's ridiculous. Nintendo 64 graphics in 2014, no thank you. I'll stick with a game that I can play on my cell phone that looks better. Are you kidding me? But, you know, that's what gets you off, do it. I'm confused. He said 25 hours a day. Yeah, exactly. I was saying I was saying a lot. That's the point. Oh, okay. (laughs) Because it's only 24 hours in a day, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I know. Jokes aren't funny when you have to explain them. (laughs) Just making sure I'm following. Please, you're the smart one here. I thought I thought a jealous wouldn't have got that. Uh I I know. I just I gotta keep everyone on track. Oh my god. Yes. Wow. (laughs) You guys race to world first understanding maybe. (laughs) <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to end my rant, but I I definitely think well, my final thoughts for this, I think Zenimax made a big mistake. I think they're making a mistake, and uh, I hope it doesn't bite them in the, in the bum face. I am on board with Zenimax's decision to not get in the middle of it. Let the gamers fight it out. Let them decide where it starts for World First. And Deltia, how about you? I kind of agree with uh, Thais. I mean, I don't think it's that big of a controversy. It's just people, people, guilds talk trash to each other. If you if you, if you uh, said this is a got person got world first, they'd still argue about it and say, Xenoax hates us and the EU community, screw it, we're leaving, we're going to go to Wildstar and show them. I mean, it's just Wildstar's going free to play anyway, so. No, it's... <laughs> Hey, they've already started doing server mergers. Yeah, are you are you being serious? No, yeah. no, it's not going free to play, but they have done some server mergers because. They oh my god, started. the game's gonna die! <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's my turn to bash them. Yeah, so oh, nah, the game's gonna die! <laughs> Don't need to. Oh my gosh, you are so hateful. <laughs> Just call me IGN. <laughs> All right, wow. let's move on before this gets any more heated. Tales of Tamriel time, personal story time. And as always, Deltia, what have you done in uh, Elder Scrolls this week? I have died and died and died and died and died. And then after I died, I died some more. And then continued to die and kept dying. I've literally spent 15 hours or more on the last boss in Dragon Star Arena without beating it. 15 hours. Same boss. Four hours a night, probably for three nights in a row. Doing the same damn fight. <laughs> we just can't beat the damn thing. Um, it's not that hard. It just takes some time and practice and people that can DPS. And so we're doing it right now. I think we're on wave eight or so. Um, we, I mean, we can blow through with most of these waves. Die maybe once or twice, like I'm probably going to do now. But gosh, it's fun. I don't know why. It's just a blast. I never thought dying a thousand times would be fun, but apparently it is. I get why you PvPers love it. Um, so yeah, that's all I've really been doing. I mean, I have shut everything down. I haven't even done dishes. I mean, I'm like, I'm going to get this Dragon Star Arena done. I've shut everything down. I'm not mowing my lawn. Hell, I haven't even taken a shower in a couple of days. I'm going to beat this damn thing. I don't care if I get world first or world last. This thing is going to die. And that's my attitude. That's the whole week I've been playing, watching videos, doing this, and then my life will continue after I beat this. So... What have I been doing? Dragon Star Arena exclusively. Seriously, watch that race the world first. You're like perfectly in line of what everyone's doing. <laughs> I have never been this upset. I mean, I stayed up till three in the morning the other night playing this, and I have I haven't done that since I was like I don't know nineteen. Um, I just like it's so it's so unforgiving if one person screws up, you're dead. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it sucks because I I hate to say it, I'm generally not that one person. Right, I'm the guy who the tank that, as long as you throw a healing springs on me, I'm not gonna die. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, and so it's frustrating to go. Okay, there's a red circle on your feet. Move. That's it. 
right? Red circle, move, kill stuff. That's that's all we have to do. And it sounds simple, but it's really not. And I don't know. It's just dragon. They did a great job with it. They did uh, a great job. I love it. I, I will play it on every single character. Uh, and then the best part about it is the loot is not the last boss. Every phase you get loot. So we brought a VR2 healer on and got them to, you know, phase 5 or something. Just, you got you got VR13 rewards for it. It's great. I love that mechanic. Nice. I definitely agree. The Dragon Star, mecha- Dragon Star Arena, all of it was a step in the right direction for competitive PvE. Like, it was the difficulty that was needed... And you're exactly right. Like that's what I used to do with my rating. Is that's what we did, hours a night. Just and that was fun. The being able to struggle. Like not everyone agrees with that, but like the I feel so accomplished when you finally do down something that you've been struggling for. Like oh, when you yeah. finally do finish it, you'll probably dance around you know yeah. your house. Well, it reminds me. Take a shower. It, it reminds me of my time in the army where you know I always go back to this crap, but. You know, it, obviously we're not killing people and doing crazy stuff, but you got to work together as a four-man unit. Even if there's a weak link, you stick together and you get through it. You help each other out. You don't bail on your team. You you find a way to get it done. You keep wor- working and you talk about it. And you say, hey, you're the weak link, but here's what we can do to fix it. Everyone accepts their role and does it. That's so cool. I just love it. it it's strategy. It's it's essentially figuring out figuring out a puzzle live action while you're playing it you got to work together you have to rely on the people you're doing it with it's not like a a single player game where hey you know you beat it's the, only me yep yeah you beat you beat the guy at the end of the castle and you save the princess well yeah it was only you if you messed up it's only you but this is you have a role to do this is what you have to do and you have to rely on the other people in your team whether it's four eight twelve however many are in the group but in dragon star it's four that they're gonna do what they're gonna do like, I'm in there, and when Thais and I are playing, I'm doing damage. She's healing. I trust her to take care of I don't worry about my health, you know, other than staying out of what I know staying is going to kill me. But I have to trust that she will do her job, which I can, except for when there's spiders. And then I know I'm going to die. True story. <laughs> yep. Um, but, yeah, that, you have to rely on other people to know what they're doing and to take care of it. Um, whether it's interrupting, tanking, doing damage, avoiding damage, healing, it's it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And they definitely upped the uh, difficulty and made it something fun that you're not going to be able to run through in 10 minutes and then be bored of it. It's something, like you said, that you're putting hours into and you will feel accomplished once you do it. Well, if you're watching the stream right now, I don't know who is, but we're on like one of the harder ones, okay? And to give you an idea of how hard this is, we just died. You have basically seven ads, all shooting ice, fire, whatever, that will one-shot anyone, essentially, unless you're constantly healing. We got that going on. We got an ad that takes 50,000 life, runs around, has a big red circle. You have another ad that will slow you down and follow another person. If those two meet, you got instantly dead. Try beating that. <laughs> it's hard. I mean, you have to move around as a unit. Everyone has to be able to heal. Everyone has to be able to basically off tank. It's and you just have to kind of weather the storm and just drop ultimates and just survive. It's a blast. Nice, nice. I can't wait till I get my character up there to be able to do that. Just because I love that type of content. Not in a total rush because I know once I'm there, I'll be there for a long time. But. I'm excited for it. Really am. So, all right. I guess it's, uh, is that all you have for this week? Yep. All right. All right. It's uh, our time, please. Talk about character changes. So, anything that you've done differently? Nope. Really? Nothing. I, I didn't change anything. I know. Oh, I thought you were... I know, but I, just, I say that to you all the time. Okay. You don't yeah. change anything. Nope. Well, why? If I find something good, why change it? I'm not you. Oh. Yeah, so I I went with sword and dagger. What? Because <laughs> I'm playing with that. Can you pick one thing? No. Well, and, and so before don't, don't you Delta, know? I know dagger and dagger's better, but I already crafted myself an epic sword, and it's only VR three, and I'll have to replace it soon. So I'm just trying to get my dual wield up. Don't you know that like the phrase that um a jack of all trades is a master of none? I disagree. 
Mm. Yeah, but I can do a lot of stuff, and I, I'm more a, versatile. But did, did you so, not hear the statement? A he, jack of all trades is a master of none. Yeah, but when a master is taken away from what he's mastering, he's worthless. Boom! There's that. There's yeah, that. There that just happened. Uh -huh. You can be an electrical engineer, but if I take you and tell you to, I don't know, I don't know, take you into a lumberjack area, that's not going to know what he's doing. Why or, Why would you ever take him to a Because that's, he's a master of electrical engineering. Know, but, but why would you ever take him away from that field and put him in the lumber? Know. Like, if you're a tank, why this would game I ever does take that? you? And, no, if you're a oh, tank, yes, it does. Why would yes, I ever take you and make you heal? There's heal oh, phases yes. where you got to break out yep. the heal staff. Okay. I'm a tank and I have a resto staff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they throw you in situations where Everyone you gotta to break heal. out of the standard. Okay, well, see, at least that's 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 two. All right, so no matter what, you always have to have a healing staff because this is the Elder Staves online. It makes perfect sense. But why would you ever need a sword and board, a bow, a destruction staff, a dagger and dagger, a sword and dagger, and whatever else combination you happen to think of? There's because never I'm, a point when you're gonna need all of that. Because I'm still leveling and. If they're not 50 and I want to respect to them because maybe they're awesome now, I'd have to level oh, so, it to 50. So you want to play a flavor of the month. I see. Flavor okay. of the month weapon I'm okay with. Ooh, okay. I okay. won't give up my Templar, but okay. I'll do flavor of the weapon. Flavor of the weapon. Yeah. Yeah, but if if you don't play with them, if, if you decide, hey, you know what, guys? We're doing trials. Oh, dude, we're, we lost our tank this week, and we really wanted to try this. Well, I got a sword and board, but it's only like 11. You'll have to spend like... 12 hours leveling it up. At yeah, least mine's, why yeah. would you volunteer, not a tank? They would just have to find a new tank. That's no, not I, you. I volunteer to be a tank. I like being able to switch my role. That's why you have multiple sets of gear. No, not me. All right. Well. Jack of all trades, master of none, master doesn't know anything outside the role. That's how it works. Anyway, so yeah, I've been playing with that. And I know dagger and dagger would be better for dual wield, but I didn't feel like crafting another one and wasting the mats for something that I'll replace in, in like a level. So that's the only reason, because I know as soon as I said that Delta, you're like, ooh, and I'm like, I know, it's not best in slot, but I'm just trying to level it right now. Um, so yeah. So what did we do this week? Mostly we explored way rest and you know we are we like to talk to everyone and see why are there so many thugs in way rest? I mean, like, seriously, half their population are thugs. Like, you walk around the city, and there's just bands of thugs beating up on, like, helpless, you know, citizens. It's like, where are the guards? Are we in Baltimore? Yeah. <laughs> See, I think it goes back into um, that the entire continent is just wanting to kill each other. Possibly. It just, I've never been in a city where there's so many thugs. Go to Baltimore. Uh, all right, we got to end the show right now. Walking Dead Season 4 is now on Netflix. Sorry. But, no, I'm just kidding. But seriously, that's what I'm doing afterwards. Yeah, so... Even in towns. In towns, yeah. there were clusters of bandits. Yes. Which, for some reason, I walked up to every cluster of bandits and said the same exact phrase. Why is there so many bandits in this city? And then I killed them. With every group. Why is there so many bandits in this city? Babe? I, I don't was... Know. Why is there so many bandits in the city, babe? I don't know. I was doing my <laughs> job. There's so many bandits in the city, babe. I don't, I don't know. Well, so when I was done, there were far fewer because I killed them all. Until they respawned. Well, and then you asked the same question. Why there's so many and bandits then in I the killed city? them. Babe, babe, I don't know. Babe, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, guys, see, this is what I deal with. Like, babe, all babe. <laughs> uh -huh. Anyway, so after we kill off a bunch of bandits and thugs, because that's what we do... Um, we got tasks from the walk or uh, Sean of the Living Dead guy, aka High King Emmerich, because he does the voice. What's his name? He's also in um, Underworld. I don't know. Oh, that name. guy's awesome! I know he is pretty cool. What is that dude? Oh, I, it's driving nuts. I can't remember his name now. He's a, he's in Shaun of the Dead, and he's a uh, Victor. A British guy. He's Victor. Well, of course, he's British. He's a bad guy. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Yeah, what uh, what American movie is not complete without a British bad guy? Right. That's what happens. I don't know. Isn't Liam Neeson British? And he's a good guy? I don't know. Anyway, continuing on. So we <clears throat> had to go and recru recover a dream shard from the Atura estate. And all I'm going to say is, why is the guy's wife such a d-hole? You know, like, when we're talking to her, she's like, you remember her? She's, like, scolding us, like, every three seconds, like, you're not wanted here. 
I know that they're going to be adding better facial expressions for the NPCs, but I couldn't help but notice that his wife at the Atura estate actually looked annoyed the entire time you were talking to her and her husband. Oh, yeah. Like, her lips she were pursed. She had this, like, scowl in her eyes. Her arms were crossed. She was shaking her head. Like, I cannot believe what is going on. She looked annoyed the whole time. Yeah, she was really, really ticked off. And then we, 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 we killed her. Yeah, we did, naturally. She was, of course, a uh, one of those omens of uh, Vermina. But we did get to recover the Dream Shard. Now we get to stop her. And I guess King sent us off. To find um, another to find, omen. Yeah, but we kind of got sidetracked, and we started attacking. I ran into a bug, the Abandoned Farm, which is a world boss. We killed it, but we didn't get the clear. Uh, did so you get the world weird. first? Yeah, we got the world first of Abandoned Farm. <laughs> too soon. Hashtag too soon. <laughs> I'm pretty funny today. Come on. I know. I like it. I like all right, it. All right. Comedic relief. I like it. Anyway, so after Zenimax refused to give us credit for our world first uh, Abandoned Farm, uh, we went down to the Trogara <laughs> Plantation. And... We had to help the plantation owners fight off bandits. Now, not just bandits and, and crocodiles oh yeah, and cro ogres. And ogres. It just wasn't a good time, but it was kind of funny because they're all old. They're, like, they're a group of old adventurers, and they're like, yeah, we retired here, but we don't want to stay retired anymore. And look at this place. It's crap. We don't want to rebuild it. So we have to go and convince them all to, you know, abandon the plantation and go back to their adventuring lifestyles. Now, these guys are like 90. That's what they look like. Um... There's only one problem I have to say with the aging mechanic is their skin looks old, their faces look old, but their bodies look like they're 20. That That is my biggest problem. Like, if a character is old, hunch their backs a little bit, like, make yeah, them look feeble. But you also got to look into it like this. It, I think the feeble people in our society are because of easy living. Like, the type of lifestyle we have provides a much easier lifestyle. Now, again, most people didn't live till 90 at those times, but they also didn't look old and feeble when they were considered older unless they were consi they were ancient. I'm just saying make it more realistic. That might be pretty realistic. I mean, I'm just saying. Have you met a 90-year-old sword I've, I've never met a 90-year-old. Well, actually, you know what? There have been some... Could you picture your grandmother swinging a sword? Maybe. Okay. All right. All right. I'm just saying, easy lifestyle, you can't compare them today. We have a longer life expectancy, but we also don't work near as hard. So, I mean, let's let's go with that. Anyway, so we're working on that quest. And the one thing that's kind of annoying is this one guy's like, okay, I, I want to leave, but I buried all my old adventuring gear by the levee. Uh, can you go dig it up? Why in creation would you bury it in three different places? I mean, like, just dig one hole and throw it all in there. But no, you bury your helm here, you bury your 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 uh, chest plate here, and you bury your axe on the other side of the island. Why? You're giving up on adventure. Just dig one hole and be done with it. I just want to know why he buried it. Like, why not put it in a closet somewhere? Uh, I don't know. He just did like, well, like, was he just walking to the plantation one day and said, hmm, I think I'm just going to bury my gear for no apparent reason. Even so, I'm going to bury my gear, but in different locations. Why? Because someone is going to want rusted over, dirt-covered, 50-year-old gear. Exactly. Well, actually, it's like 20, because they said they were there for 12 or 13 years or something like that. Oh. Okay. Even so, 10 years in a essentially a, what used to be a swampy land before they built the levee, that's going to be rusted crud. Yep. But again, why three locations? And it uh, it just baffled me, like, seriously. Because he's a Nord and they're not real smart. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. And finally, the last thing we did was we had our Explore Cyrodiil event with the guild, and that was a lot of fun. We had a kind of a small turnout. It was uh, me, Thais, uh, Shabib, and uh, Entrelli at first, and Kipster joined us later. Uh, we had a lot of fun out there in Cyrodiil, exploring delves and... Um, Doing dolmens. Dolmens. And, of course, at the end of the night, when we were finally done, um, the Ebonheart Pact opened up one of the relic gates 
in Daggerfall Covenant who had a relic. So the five of us said, hey, let's go try to steal that relic. So it was a final battle in the relic uh, temple with the five of us trying to beat off the guards and grab the relic. We were so close. The relic is the scroll, right? Yep. Okay, we were so close to getting that scroll. Yeah. This close. <laughs> yeah, it was it was funny. We're like, well, we already decided we were going to give up for the night. Like, we were done. We were out there for probably two, three hours. And we're like, okay, we're going to call it a night. And that's when we saw the message that the thing opened. I'm like, guys, you guys want to run over to, to the gate? Because there's two, two um, sky shards you can't get unless the relic gates are open. Well, one of the relic gate was open, so we were able to get one of the sky shards from uh, the Daggerfall Covenant. So... We all said, yeah, we're going to run over there. We're going to try to get it. So we went go over, and we're after this thing. And we do actually get that one, but unfortunately, the way they made the land, you can't just go behind the gates. You actually have to have both of them opened, which is weird. Like, we couldn't go over to where the other one was hidden. I, I don't know why, but we can't. Because mountains. we can't climb mountains. Yeah, that's true. But, yeah, so we got one of the scrolls. So it was pretty cool, but we did end the night with a bang, trying to pull the guards out the Elder Scroll and try to capture it. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. So, that was our week in game. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on to our next section, which is the dramatic reading. This week, we'll be starting a new series of books from the Elder Scrolls Online. We decided to do a book, uh, decided to do the book set Shadowfen Lore. Perhaps they might actually get a little bit of her Argonian lore within these pages. This set contains... Ten volumes, including A Mother's Nursery Rhyme, A Shallow Pool, Dusk, Dusk Shadow, Fair Argonian Maiden. Oh, my. Uh, where's the lusty Argonian Maiden? So I want to know. Freedom's Price, On the Cahontan Flu, Remember Me, uh, Soriel's Journal, The Right, Matic for the Job, and The Ruby Necklace. Now, these are all books that you can find within Shadowfen and give a little bit of lore of the zone. So, um, this week, the first book in the series is A Mother's Nursery Rhyme. So, Thais, take it away. Do you have five children, Mother? I've heard that you do. Five children? No, tonight I have four. Four children, sweet and pure. Four and no more. Do you have four children, Mother? I've heard that you do. Four children? No, tonight I have three. Three children a bed late today. Three and no more. Do you have three children, mother? I've heard that you do. Three children? No, tonight I have two. Two children, quiet and shy. Two and no more. Do you have two children, mother? I've heard that you do. Two children? No, tonight I have one. One child singing a song. One and no more. Do you have one child, mother? I've heard that you do. One child, please, I have none. They're with their father now and live here no more. That's a really depressing nursery rhyme. They all died and went to Sithis. Yep. <laughs> you got that. that is, that's dark. Albeit, you know, that's kind of like uh, our nursery rhymes, like Ring Around the Rosies about the bubonic plague. So, mm -hmm. I mean, creepy. All it makes me think of is the family guy. It's raining, luggage, and babies, and limbs, and daddy doesn't come home. <laughs> <laughs> Pan Am flight, huh? All right. All right. So that is our dramatic reading for uh, this week. It's a short little one, but I thought it was kind of interesting. And Thais is now laughing her, her head off over here. All right. We're moving on to the next section, which is our guild corner. Deltia, you want to plug your guild? Hard contact. Um, we did do a guild event I forgot to talk about with ESOTR and um, a bunch of people we actually got nuked pretty good, which was okay, you know, explaining that this is what PvP is really like. So we did that. That was fun. Um, but hard contact right now. We're running Dragonstar Arena, doing a lot of PvE and PvP. We're not just doing one thing. So if that's something you want to do, we're all, all the Merry Dominion exclusive. Um, so that is a thing. I know you guys hate filthy elves. but So that's what we're doing. If you want to be a part of it, holler at me in-game, at Deltia, D-E-L-T-I-A, um, and I can get you in. So that's really all for that. Excellent. Um, and of course, if anyone's jo interested in joining the uh, Friends and Family Guild for Tales of Tamriel, you can contact either Agelos as A-G-G-E-L-O-S or at Tear Eater, T-E-A-R-E-A-T-E-R, in-game for an invite. Um, yeah, so that's it for this one. We're, uh, we are not 
El Mario Dominion exclusive for anyone. So if you just want to come chat, hang out, have a good time, that's what we do. Uh, finally, a good friend of ours, Kipster, gotta love Kipster, uh, has his own PV progression kill called the Dragon Guard, currently accepting any VR ranked character with a serious intention towards end game PV content. If you have an interest, you can contact Kipster in game, that's K Y P S T E R, to apply. Uh, this is an Ebonheart Pact exclusive guild, because we are only Ebonheart Pact. So. Blood for the Pact. Blood for the Pact. There we go. All right. That's the end of our guild corner. We're going to go ahead and move into our emails and iTunes reviews. We had one email this week, and unfortunately uh, I picked the book set before, but it's kind of interesting anyway. Go ahead. Hello, Thais and Agelos and Deltia. In response to your plea for books in Argonia, I would suggest reading the Argonian Account, a four-part series following an imperial named Demucus Scotti on his misadventure to the province of Black Marsh. The books give interesting insight on typical life within this murky corner of Nern during the Third Era, and a bit of general info on the Sax Leal themselves. But I would recommend reading the precursor series, A Dance in Fire, first, as there are several references to the events of these books in the Argonian account, and it gives a better introduction and insight into the character of Demucus Scott. I pronounced them differently because you both spelled them both differently. Uh, this is just the email copy-paste. Oh, is it? Oh, I thought you... Okay. Well. Then I apologize. Also, also, all the lore these books gave are what helped me helped make the Bosmer my favorite race. However, it must be noted that A Dance in Fire deals with the Bosmer and Valenwood during the end of the Five-Year War against the Khajiit and not Black Marsh. And spanning through the impressive seven volumes, there are only two occurrences of implied cannibalism. So it's not that bad. <laughs> Love from Australia, Severed Ned. Hey, everyone loves a good barbecue once in a while. That's all I'm saying. Oh, that's disgusting. I would make a Bosmer. I would never. I would kill I every elf would. out there except for... But you don't like Khajiit either. Summer. I love Khajiit. They're... No. I like Khajiit. No. They're I big kittens. I only like Yerki. They're cute kittens. They're cute like kittens. All right. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, that is the, uh, it's the end of our show, guys. <sighs> I hate this part of the show because I don't like saying goodbye. It makes me sad. But it's time for our final thought. So let's go ahead and go around and let everyone know where you can follow us in-game, out-of-game, however you want to do it. So, Thais, why don't you tell us what your final thoughts for this episode are and where people can find you. Um, I'm really happy that we're doing a book series on Argonians. I'm so excited, but not for the one book because I know I'm probably going to cry at the end. Because I know I cried when I read it in-game several times. So that won't be fun. You can find me in-game at Tear Eater. T-E-A-R-E-A-T-E-R. Okay. Okay. No, nowhere else? No. no. Okay. Or, or, or I guess on Twitter at, at, at uh, Twit Queen Thais. <laughs> there you go. Okay. I was waiting for you to say that. Awesome. All right. So you went and made one. Now tell people you didn't follow you there. <laughs> All right, and Deltia, my good man, tell us uh, your final thoughts for the episode, where people can find you, that kind of thing. Final thoughts is I'm really happy with the content. Uh, 1.5 might be a little bit disappointing, but the next batch should be something really good. So game's looking to be good. I really like the small group content. Um, you can find me at Deltia's Gaming, D-E-L-T-I-A-S Gaming uh, on Twitter or DeltiasGaming.com, and game at Deltia. So if you want to chat or just talk about builds or try to run Dragon Star and stuff like that, I'd be more than happy to do that. Um, and as far as the website and stuff, still making a bunch of guides. Got a new authors, a couple new authors, so we're having PvP. I'll still be doing the builds. I uh, really want to get this done so I can you know, talk about Dragon Star and how we got through it. So look for that kind of guide coming out. And everyone's been asking, how do I level so fast? That is coming this week. So that's it. Nice. Excellent. I do want to thank both my co-hosts for joining me this afternoon. Um, as for myself, um, really happy with the game as a whole. Like I said, I'm loving the new content that's coming out. I'm excited for it. I'm excited that it's difficult. I got to speak with uh, our friend Kipster in game, 
saying how he was doing hell raw citadel to gain a little bit of confidence back and when i asked him why i said isn't it easy he's like yeah but the serpent trial is not easy and that actually really made me very happy i was very excited to hear that and of course dragon star arena so far i think there's only one guild for both uh at least on the u.s mega server uh that has down both um the serpent trial and um Dragon Star Arena. I might be wrong on Dragon Star Arena because this was true as of like I don't know Wednesday when last I looked. But um, yeah, it's a lot of people are uh, haven't finished it yet, and that excites me because I hate when I see content get downed in like five seconds. It it just bothers me. Um, of course, you guys heard me rant. I still love you, Zenimax. I am upset with you right now, so we're we're kind of having a fight. That's what I'm going to say. Me and Zenimax, we're kind of like a boyfriend and girlfriend right now. We're just not talking because we're a little <laughs> upset at one another. Take a break. Um, it's all right. Take a little. We just got to step apart for a second. Not that I'm not playing your game or anything because I am, but I don't have to look at you. Don't you? Don't be, be checking a tweet that comes out playing Wildstar. All right? <laughs> we're gonna, you and I are going to have a talk. Oh, I would rather perform some act that most teenage males do with sandpaper than play Wildstar. What? Oh yeah, I, I had to keep it somewhat clean for the show. <laughs> wow. Okay, yeah. there's that. There is that. But, <laughs> um... <laughs> yeah, Zenimax, I'm disappointed with your decision not to, um... You know, declare who was world first and not supporting the hardcore community. That really upsets me. And, I mean, you guys kind of already had a big fallout with your hardcore community when you limited your API add-ons. You know, there's certain things that we look for, and you're not doing those things. We're not having good communication on our side of the relationship, so I'm very upset. Still love you, but I'm angry at you right now. All right, so that's our that's our show for this week. Um, as I go back... Thank you all for listening to this podcast. If you wish to help support the podcast, feel free to donate via the PayPal link on our website. If you wish to contact us with questions, comments, criticisms, the website for our show is Tamriel.com. Or you can email the show at podcast at tales of Tamriel.com or use the about section on our website. It, it goes the same place. You can follow the show on Twitter at Tales of Tamriel, Facebook at Facebook.com slash Tales of Tamriel Podcast. Also, feel free to rate and subscribe to us via iTunes and on YouTube at youtube.com slash Tales of Tamriel. That's where we put all of our episodes, including the live stream, for you to watch later or again, whatever you want to do. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope you enjoyed this episode. Have a good night, everybody.